write us off. They think we are defeated by history. They patronize us, presuming that we can't actually perform. Yes, we can't, becomes their mantra. But black Americans can perform. We just need to do the work. You need a closely approximating parity of performance on the average to get equality of respect. But you've applied different criteria uh, for the selection process in a highly competitive and elite activity where selection criteria are correlated with post-admissions performance. So you're getting disparities in performance post-admission that you're not owning up to. This is corruption. So many have observed that there are not enough black economists on the faculties of leading universities. We can do better, it is said. We should be more diverse and inclusive in the top departments in the country. I'm not against there being more black economists. I'm not. There should be at least two black economists in each department, let's say. Maybe I could agree with all of that. But suppose there are just not enough top flight black economists to go around. Dare we face that reality? If doing better means making the criteria of selection into this rarefied enterprise of academic economics at the top depend upon the racial identity of job applicants, and this is happening, then you're not going to get equality. Instead, you're going to get some degree of black mediocrity. I don't take any pleasure in saying that. But the fact is currently unsayable. It's unsayable to observe openly that there could be racial differences in performance in venues such as this. And yet I get emails. I'm a partner at a big law firm in New York City. Here's what I can't say publicly. Please don't quote me. Many of our associates who are of color are not up to snuff, but we hired them anyway because some of them are going to have to be made partner here. And I shudder at that prospect. That's not equality. Here's what we ought to do instead, the development narrative. We ought to devote our efforts to enhancing the development of African-American prospects such that when you apply roughly equal criteria of selection at the right tail, the numbers of black selected go up. But based on achievement, you should not increase the number of successful applicants by changing standards to achieve racial parity. That's a huge mistake. We will reap the whirlwind. Further, we need not strive for population parity in every pursuit. Indeed, how can you expect population parity in an enterprise when there are some groups, Asians, Jews, who are overrepresented significantly? You can't get population, the numbers have to add up to one, the fractions. <clears throat> you can't get population parity in every activity while maintaining equal criteria of selection when there are uh, when all groups are not feeding into the pool of qualified applicants at the same rate. It's a fool's errand. My view is that the permanent embrace of preferential selection in extremely selective and competitive venues by race has been a humongous mistake. Not a word, but I use it anyway. I can understand its transitional use, historically speaking, but institutionalizing this practice is inconsistent with true equality, in my view. That's why I signed on to the amicus brief, which some economists put together to support the Asians in their lawsuit against Harvard. Addiction to the use of racial preferences in the most elite of America's academic venues breaks my heart, to be honest with you, because it's an invitation to mediocrity. It's a kind of bluff and a shell game. Let me be clear. At the very most exclusive venues of intellectual labor, at a Princeton University or a Brown or a Pepperdine or an MIT or a Caltech, this stuff is hard. Not everybody does it well. It's hard reading Plato or Aristotle and figuring out what they're talking about, or Immanuel Kant for that matter. It's hard doing advanced mathematics, physics, or chemistry or other STEM disciplines. The stuff is hard. The work is difficult. Medical school is difficult. Law school is hard. It requires real intellectual mastery to be done effectively. Unfortunately, a proportionate number of African Americans have not achieved that mastery. We can go into the reasons why. There are many. History has not been entirely kind to black people. There is blame enough here to go around. But the fact of the matter is that relative to population, fewer blacks have developed this mastery. So we are fewer 
in the venues where the intellectual work is difficult. Now, there are two things you can do in the face of that. One is to lower standards so as to increase the representation of African Americans and call that belonging and inclusion. The other is to face these developmental deficiencies and address them forthrightly. And I mean, address them from infancy. Now, I'm not arguing for laissez-faire here. I'm not saying that there should be no public initiatives, no educational enrichments and so on, no summer programs or whatever. We can talk about what needs doing. But can we first understand the problem correctly? If our kids are testing poorly, I'm talking about black kids, it's not because the test is biased against them, it's because they do not know the material. If a poor Asian kid living in a three-room apartment with four siblings can ace the test, our kids can do it too. Anybody who doesn't think so is a racist. They have the racism of low expectations about black people. They write us off. They think we are defeated by history. They patronize us, presuming that we can't actually perform. Yes, we can't, becomes their mantra. But black Americans can perform. We just need to do the work, and we don't have to do it by ourselves. Give us an opportunity to confront the deficits and redress them, maintaining a level playing field. Do not lower the bar for us, and we'll measure up in the fullness of time. It may not happen tomorrow, and it may not happen the next day, but it will happen in the fullness of time. I say this as a matter of faith. Now, I can understand that in 1970, with all the rabble rousing and whatnot and the universities having to meet the protesters halfway and whatnot, that they did what they did. But this is not 1970. We're a half century past all of that and we're laying down a predicate for how we are to go forward from here. And this, no, it's not equality, it's equity, bunk, is a surrender in the face of the problem that we actually confront. The problem is to develop black people so that proportionately more of us exhibit the mastery requisite to being successful in these competitive venues.